I have a piece of Strathmore oil painting paper and it has a linen finish. I actually use the reverse side which has a little bit of a more subtle texture than the front side. It's going to be more of an a la prima sort of approach. So this is going to be just a warm cool oil study but it's going to have a little more detail than a color study. So I'm just going to sketch out some boundaries for my head. So I'm starting with a block in. So just very simplified, looking at points and tilts and the major subdivisions of the form, the large, more generalized shapes, just trying to get the placement and somewhat of the character of the major, larger shapes on the paper. And I'm just doing this visually. Right now, I may check my measurements at some point with a skewer or something like this. Some people use a proportional divider. I'm trying to keep my pencil marks really light and not score them into the paper. So I'm holding my pencil more towards the eraser end and letting it sort of gently float across the paper rather than choking up on the pencil and inscribing the line into the paper. So it's kind of a breezy stroke. I have this little eraser stick here. It's just a rubber eraser. And then I also have a, a big soft brush to wipe away eraser crumbs. So I'm not trying to draw very careful curves. I'm keeping it mostly straight lines. If you want to draw a center line down the vertical and then the horizontal, sometimes that can help especially if you don't have them set up side by side the same size like this. It can help you kind of have a vertical and horizontal midline to help you place the features and the basic shapes of the head. I'm just trying to do it as best I can, just visually using the boundaries of the sort of window of the composition and then the internal landmarks of the head itself. How far the point of the chin comes over. So I don't think it's completely centralized. It's shifted over towards the right a little bit. So you can see that the left edge of the crop to the center of the chin is wider than the chin to the right edge of the canvas, right? I think I've kind of centralized mine, so I need to shift it over a little bit. And I, what I like to do, you can do this right away, makes it a little easier, but what I like to do is test things out first, like make my hypothesis about where things are, and then check myself with the skewer. So I'm not just copying one thing to the next, I'm actually making a guess at where it is before I check myself. So I'm seeing that the chin needs to come a little bit lower. So what happens when you try something first and then check yourself rather than just copying this distance over with the skewer right away is that you get feedback. So it's a way of teaching yourself. You get this feedback loop where you try something out and then you check yourself and you get feedback on how good your guess was, right? How well you did in, in guessing that visual shape. If we just copy directly right away or trace, for instance, we're not actually creating that feedback loop that improves our drawing skills over time. Comparing this tilt to how it forms this shape of the jaw as a whole, how it compares to the vertical of the side of the paper, and also the tilt that it makes compared to the vertical of the side of the paper, and also the bottom of the chin. It was a little steep there, so I'm just flattening out that angle slightly. You know, people talk about the thirds of the face. The hairline to the eyebrows is a third. The eye eyebrows to the bottom of the nose is a third. And then the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin is a third. And that's approximate. You know, it's going to be different depending on the perspective of the head, the particular characteristic of the person. The eyes tend to be the halfway point from the top of the head, depending on how poofy the hair is, of course, to the bottom of the chin. It tends to be about halfway. Halfway between the bottom of the nose and the bottom of the chin is the bottom of the lower lip. Not the line between the lips, but the bottom of the lower lip. So something about like that. If you're seeing underneath the chin and underneath the nose, then that means you're looking up at her a little bit. And so the perspective affects the way that these proportions divide up. But let's check the thirds. So we have about a third there, about a third there, and about a third there. So that works out, you know, roughly. So you know you're kind of in the ballpark. If we think about the center line of her head, the center line is shifted over a little tiny bit to our right. Okay, so there's a little more space on this side of her face 
than this side. If you look at the cheeks, this one is wider, this is narrower. We're seeing more of this ear and more of this side of the face, less of this ear, less of this side of the face. Okay, the ear lobes are, they almost align with the bottom of the nose. They feel a little bit lower, okay, than the bottom of the nose, the base of the nose, which means, again, gives us a clue that we're looking up at her. So I'm guessing I might need to bring the ear lobe down a little bit. Let's just check that right there. And, you know, again, I'm keeping this very simple, straight lines, basically, or very subtle curves. As I start to break things down more, all over, I can start to be more specific about shapes in certain areas because I have more landmarks to check against. I'm starting to think about where is that crease of the eye coming in. I'm not drawing in the eye, I'm kind of working up to it, I'm making a nest for it. We can also start thinking a little bit about the light direction, so we're going to have a shadow shape that kind of breaks up this side of the face and comes in a little bit on the nose, down the chin. The light is mostly frontal, but it's shifted a little bit to coming over slightly from the upper right, okay? So we've got the angle coming in from the upper right, and we can tell because the shadows are collecting on the lower left. There's a narrower band of shadow than on some other paintings that I've copied where there's just a little triangle of light on the cheek, whereas this, her face is mostly in the light and then there's a little sliver of shadow over here and also on the nose, etc. Kind of approximately the inner corner of the eye, so I'm thinking about the width of the eye and also looking at the distance from the pupil that I've kind of marked out to the corner of the eye. So I'm just putting in landmarks I want to see, does this width feel about right? So I'm trying to think about the distance away vertically and also how it aligns. So it's just maybe just slightly in from the inner corner of that eye. They almost align. This could probably come up a little bit. I'm just kind of scanning around the drawing. I want to be careful about drawing dark lines on this side because it is on the light side of the face. Um, but there is a shadow on the left side, so... I'm just going to kind of put that in. It makes a little triangle from the side of the nose to the ear to the corner of the mouth. Okay, so I'm looking at that angle. I think this ear needs to come down a little bit more. So I'm just going to hold this kind of across to see if it seems like it's horizontal, measuring against two different parts. So I think that the nose, the kind of nose as a whole, needs to come up. What about the corners of the eyes seem about right, brows seem about right, hairline seems about right, seems okay. So yeah, I think the nose as a whole needs to move up. What about the corners of the mouth? I feel like they might be a little bit low based on um, the fact that I have the nose a little bit low. And yeah, they're a little bit low, so I'm going to move those up. And what I like to do when I'm moving something is I'll make the corrections first. Or like, you know, make a little mark where I want to move it, and then erase after that. Because if I erase first, then I don't have a sense of like how much I'm moving something, or in what direction from where it was before. Okay, so now I'm moving the corners of the mouth up, which I have room to do since I moved the nose up. And I'm still just thinking in terms of landmarks, not drawing careful contours, because it's much easier to move landmarks around than it is to move around like a very careful contour drawing once you realize that it's in the wrong place, right? So that's one reason to keep it very simple at this stage as you start to increase the accuracy. We want to think about the, the trapezius muscle kind of wraps around the neck like this. So we want to get that sense. It's almost like a shawl, right? So thinking about that rounded shape and then this shoulder is higher than the other. You know, the eyebrow, the edge of the eyebrow is mostly a broken edge. So I want to leave it kind of open and not just like draw in a hard edged shape at that point. The crease of the eyelid, you can see it kind of divides into three basic segments. There's a change of direction like right in here and right in here. So we see this tilt that goes kind of at the top across it's the longest tilt. And then this one kind of ramps down towards the corner of the eye. 
uh, inner corner of the eye and this one ramps down towards the outer corner of the eye. So it's kind of like a, a curtain that's been propped up at this point and this point. And what's doing that is the eyeball, the shape of the eyeball, the shape of the cornea, which kind of pushes up, um, has something to do with it. And then also the shape of the brow bone and the, the different muscles and fat compartments around the eye. The way the bone kind of pushes forward here and then there's like a hollow over towards the bridge of the nose. So those forms are kind of causing the contour of the crease of the eyelid and then the eyelid itself to have a certain shape. So it has a structure. We're not going to just draw a semicircle there, right? We want to actually find structure to the curve um, with structural points that we can determine by the way that the change of direction happens at certain points. And then the lash line, again, it kind of lifts over the iris because there's that clear um, dome of the cornea that kind of pushes it up. And then I'm still keeping this, even though I'm breaking it down and getting into more detail, I'm still keeping it just basically line segments, points and, and tilts. Um, not drawing in curves, not being super detailed. Just trying to get the structure. And I'm not drawing like a really harsh line under the eye because generally what happens is the the lower eyelid has that little almost like tiny little narrow shelf that's turned up towards the light. So um, what I'm gonna do instead is mark out the lower lash line. So that gives me a little bit of space between the iris and this line that I'm putting in. And I'm not going to make it go all the way across usually. I'll put it towards the shadow side and then let it disappear. A common mistake um, that I found that I make and also many students make is to make the irises a little too big, make the features a little too large. So that's something that's in the back of my mind. You know, I think um, I want to make sure that I don't expand them because they're so emotionally important that I lose the accuracy of the proportions. And this will help me judge this shape of the jaw if I put in this little shadow. So it kind of breaks at this point. There's a softer area in this um, kind of fuller part of the cheek here, whereas the, at the cheekbone and towards the chin, the shadow edge is a little sharper. So I'm not necessarily gonna draw in a sharp edge for that whole thing but I want to get a sense of where it does have sort of a definitive border between the light and the shadow. I want to kind of start to figure out where that needs to go. There's a lot of reflected light here under the chin, but there's it's still in shadow under here. And then there's a cast shadow on the neck. So again, I want to think about the continuation of this form, the trapezius muscle connecting the neck and the shoulder to this form that kind of wraps around the back of the neck. You just want to make sure that the internal measurements are consistent more so than adhering to any grid or you know window that you're using because those are external armatures imposed on the figure which has its own internal armature and we always want to give that precedence um, you know we use the external armatures like a grid or the shape of the window to give us a sense of the basic placement but then we want to make sure that we're allowing the internally consistent relationships to guide most of our drawing decisions once we get past that point. So I don't want to outline the lips too heavily, but there's definitely a distinct vermilion border to her lips. And the lower lip, it's a little softer towards the corners. You can see there's not really an outline there, so I'm being a little more careful. But the upper lip definitely has an outline. And I'm kind of reaching the point at which I don't necessarily want to keep getting more and more detailed at this point. Um, I think I've reached the level of detail that this pencil drawing can support, and then I want to move on to the painting pretty soon. So here the, the vermilion part of the lip, the, the pink part of the lip, kind of rolls under as it approaches the corner. So it doesn't just make, you know, like a line, a straight line from the point of the cupid's bow to the corner of the mouth it actually kind of rolls under and then you have this little node shape that's actually a thickening in the muscle around the mouth 
um, where other muscles of the face attach into. One thing you can do is look at both the reference and the drawing in a mirror to see how they compare because you know when you're looking at it one way you tend to get used to what you have already drawn and start to lose your ability to see the mistakes the discrepancies between the reference and your drawing so it can help sometimes to look at it in a mirror sometimes look at it upside down just uh, shake up the viewpoint that you're assessing it by. 